All right, so let, welcome to part two. Um, part one was very, very long. I think it was about 30 minutes or so. Um, but that's because we had to pack a lot of information in there. In fact, thinking back to it, I probably should have broken down part one into three different parts. One for the root word, one for the suffixes, um, prefix, and so on and so forth. But anyway, we're going to be doing part uh, two. Actually, you know what? When I think back to it, I might actually turn part one into two parts, depending on when you see this. Um, anyway, so part two is going to be about directional terms and the human body. We're going to try not to cover every single item, even though the quiz that you take will cover every single item. Um, but on here, to make sure that you know we make proper use of time, you're not going to take every single second of it. So directional terms and the human body. Let's see what we have here. Okay. So we start off with our uh, anatomical positions. All right. Simply, when you talk about anatomical position, you you simply be talking about standing up straight as humans normally do. Uh, stand up straight with your hands on your side, feet forward, uh, looking forward. That is your normal anatomical position. When you do so, um, there are certain things that you can um, talk about in relation to each other, and you can describe them as whether they are is medial, whether it's um, uh, superior, inferior, whether it's proximal, and so on and so forth. So that's what we're going to do in this section. And then we also dive a little bit into cells. Uh, not not so deep into cells because um, that's pretty much not what this is about. But so, but we will touch upon it a little bit. So you have a decent understanding in your medical terminology class. So um, let's start off first with the anatomical positions and anatomical terms, anatomy terms here. Um, so your planes, all right. Planes essentially divide the body into different sections. Your normal planes are typically uh, your vertical and your horizontal planes, all right. So let's say, for instance, let's talk a bit about the vertical plane, and obviously vertical is top to bottom, uh, as the way the sun rises. However you want to look at it, whichever is easiest for you to recall. Let's say we talk about mid sagittal, all right. Mid sagittal means that you are essentially dividing a body. Uh, into two uh, equal halves. All right, so you have a left side and a right side. That would be mid sagittal. In fact, let's see if I can get you a um, a nice little picture online of a mid sagittal position. Okay. Okay, mid sagittal. Okay, and let's check out the image section here. I don't know whose image this is, but it should be an image of a mid sagittal. Uh, let me see if I can find one that I can show you that would be nice to look at. All right, so um, looking at a mid sagittal line, as you can see to the far left here. This individual, um, actually, let me get this one looks even better. Okay, okay. All right, so you can see properly. So this would be a mid sagittal, right? Mid sagittal is dividing this person's body into two equal halves. Now let's say it actually this division wasn't equal, meaning that it wasn't symmetric on both sides. Uh, one side didn't equal each other. Then it will simply just be a sagittal plane. All right, so sagittal will mean that you divide the body into left side and the right side, but you're not necessarily dividing the body in half. If you did, uh, excuse me, to uh, equal half. If you did that, then it would be mid sagittal. Um, and here, actually, we can take advantage and use this also to do our um, top and bottom. All right. So you can also do a frontal, or sometimes known as a coronal plane, which is the same thing. It means that if I'm cutting this individual from top to bottom, I'm actually cutting her sideways. So I'm going to have a front and I'm going to have a back. All right. So remember, sagittal will be left and right, or as I'm dividing this body by frontal or by coronal, I'm do doing it um, back and front, or in other words, um, in anterior and posterior. 
right? And then we can also do transverse. Uh, transverse is just across um, or horizontal, uh, which is same thing, all right? So you can look at them in that sense. Uh, so let me drop down this picture here so we can return to where we were. Okay, very good. All right, so we are back where we are. All right, so um, we already seen the mid sagittal, sagittal frontal, right? The frontal divided the individual's body into anterior and the posterior. So you saw the front and the back. And then the transverse divided the body into superior and inferior. A and inferior, not an inferior. That wouldn't work out. There you go. All right, so more um, body directional terms. Ventral, when you talk about ventral, you're talking about things that are uh, in the front, right? whereas dorsal would be in the back. If you say cephalic, that means uh, something that's towards the head. If you say caudal, that means you are talking about towards the tail or towards the end, uh, the tail end, basically. Uh, proximal. Proximal means that it is uh, closest to the point of origin or point of attachment. Right? Point of origin or point of attachment. Distal or distill uh, mean that it will be uh, furthest from point of origin. Uh, medial. Medial will be closest to the midline, right? Closest to the midline or the center. And lateral will be uh, on the sides. All right. So if you were talking about, let's say the bones, all right, um, well, we haven't done bones yet, so I guess I probably shouldn't go that far into it. Um, so anyway, that's about it. Let's move on and see what other directional terms you have. All right, so the more directional terms, click to add title. Uh, how about more directional terms? More directional terms. Um, so if you were looking at the body, all right, you can also divide the upper body, specifically the thorax region and uh, uh, yeah, your thoracic region and your upper um, pelvic region. All right, you can divide it into these elements. Um, at the very right below the ribs, right, you have hypochondriac. All right, the word chondri here referring to the ribs or specifically here your um, and your ribs. Um, so let's say we're looking at the body. Right? And uh, uh, remember, whenever you look at a body or look at any sort of direction, you always look at it from the point of view of the um, the person or the item, not from your point of view. So always keep that in mind. So anyway, so that means that this would be our right and this would be our left. Well, not our left. The picture's left and the picture's right. Um, so, right side, left side, and obviously this is the midpoint. So, right below the ribs, all right, here will be our right hypochondriac region. Go right into the middle, will be epigastric region because it's right above the stomach, right, which is right in the upper abdomen. Uh, and here will be our left hypochondriac, all right. If you come to the right side, it can begin again. You have the right lumbar. Right? Your lumbar is your lower uh, sides, right? And your umbilical. Right? Your umbilical will be well. I think everybody pretty much knows your, where your umbilical cord is located. Well, not your umbilical cord. Your um, belly button. You shouldn't be walking around with your umbilical cord at this point. If you're watching this video anyway. Um, your left lumbar. Your right iliac is just above your hip bone. And we'll talk more about iliac and the rest of those things when we get there. And again, right below your stomach would be your hypogastric, right? Because that was epigastric, hypogastric. Oh, actually, we haven't done prefix yet, right? So, well, we'll, we'll do prefix soon. Um, no, we, we talked about prefix. What am I saying? We did. Hmm, I need a drink or something. Uh, water. Um, left iliac. So, again, you're looking at the body. Um, uh, this is one way to divide a body. Right? You can also divide a body by quadrants. Um, uh, let's see. Do I have a quadrant for you guys? Or is it just the, uh, this section here? It might be quadrants in there somewhere. Anyway, let's keep going because we don't want to take forever doing this one. 
uh, like we did last time. All right, so here are some very general terms on diseases. All right, when you say pathogen, you're referring to a disease causing microorganism. Right, a disease causing microorganism, a disease that's able to be transmitted um, from and to, right, directly and indirectly as well. Uh, it's referred to as a communicable disease. Uh, and this, you know, something like TB will be a communicable disease, HIV. Um, hepatitis, forms of type, and so on and so forth. Um, also, we have, you know, disease when they are transmitted, there are certain terms for transmitted diseases. Terms like um, bloodborne, right? Airborne, uh, hopefully I don't have to explain bloodborne, it just means it's by blood and also um, by uh, bodily fluids, seminal fluids and also um, vaginal fluids as well. Airborne is exactly what it sounds like, it's through the air. Uh, foodborne or waterborne, again, that's I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And vector one is by um, animals, right? By animals. So those are some of the major um, terms referring to diseases. All right. Let's see what else we have. And typically, people who uh, actually look at stuff like this will be specializing in um, epidemiology. Right? Essentially, this means above population specialist. Right. So individual who studies all the diseases concerning populations. All right. Endemic. Uh, epidemic and pandemic. All right, so these are ways to describe outbreaks. Uh, and epidemiologists essentially does that. They um, specialize in outbreaks. All right, so endemic is essentially an ongoing uh, outbreak. All right, epidemic is uh, concentrating a, a particular population. All right, whereas a pandemic is worldwide. All right, so AIDS is an epi uh, pandemic because it's worldwide. Whereas if we were to have a case of, um, I don't know, uh, pneumonia going around or something like that, we may refer to that as a ep an epidemic. <clears throat> All right. Um, lastly, we have <clears throat> types of diseases. So a disease can be of different form. A disease, if a disease is functional, that means that you essentially, you don't really have any physiological changes um, that you'll, you'll find. In a sense, let's say you have something like... Um, anxiety All right so you have anxiety but physiologically um, let's say your your liver is working just fine your heart is working just fine um, or maybe your heart may not be working fine if you're hyperventilating but typically speaking everything is working fine there is no true disease in the sense um, there's no infection there is no true disease in the sense but somehow you're still not doing well um, you you may be overreacting or something. So now an example would be anxiety. Uh, that would be a functional disease. Uh, iatrogenic illness, right? Um, idiopathic illness, infectious illness, so on and so forth. Uh, iatrogenic is one that is acquired. Um, uh, idiopathic means there is no known cause. Infectious disease. Um, and infectious disease means that there is infection. Um, nosocomial means it's also quite. Uh, let me make sure I, I, I dis distinguish here. Well, iatrogenic means that, let's say for instance, um, you were prescribed a, um, I don't know, Tylenol. Right? You went home and the Tylenol was the one that caused you to become ill. So basically, it's a, it's a, um, it's an acquired disease from something that was supposed to actually help you. All right. So it, it's, um, yeah. Whereas nosocomial is something that is acquired. Uh, specifically in a hospital setting or a clinic setting or a healthcare setting. So healthcare acquired disease. Uh, congenital means something that you're born with and a prenatal disease is something that obviously came when you were in your mommy's tummy. Um, now let's see, I think we have spent enough time on this. I'm going to have to spend more time on the cells so that would be another part two of a part. I guess I, I should call that part two section B. Alright, alright, so I'll see you next. Bye-bye.